One loose bolt. That's it. That's all it took to bring down a Cessna and end a pilot's life in Idaho. And here's the crazy part. It wasn't some mysterious engine failure or freak weather event. Nope. This tragedy was triggered by something so basic, so preventable, that once you hear it, you'll probably never look at aircraft maintenance the same way again. So let's set the scene. It's June 12th, 2023, at McCall, Idaho. A private pilot, 58 years old, instrument rated with over 1,200 hours in his logbook, is preparing to head out with a passenger on a short flight. On paper, this wasn't some reckless weekend warrior. The guy had experience, and his passenger, a 55-year-old male, trusted him enough to climb into the right seat that morning. The pre-flight looked clean, the run-up checks didn't show any issues, everything seemed fine. Witnesses standing near the runway noticed that takeoff roll was dragging on way longer than usual. And the engine? It sounded smooth, sure, but just weak. Not coughing, not sputtering, just not pulling the way it should. As the plane finally lifted off, the pilot muttered the words, no one wants to hear. We have a power problem. At 5,000 feet elevation, on a warm morning, and with a slight tailwind that Cessna already had thin margins for climb performance, add reduced power, it's a recipe for disaster. And sure enough, the aircraft struggled, barely getting airborne before smacking the treetops beyond the runway. It crashed just half a mile away, near a church playground. And here's the real kicker. This wasn't because the pilot messed up. He was doing what he could. The real failure started long before that morning, back in a maintenance shop hundreds of miles away. About 15 flight hours before the accident, the airplane had been in for maintenance at Stu's Arrow, a small shop in Carson City, Nevada. Now, the pilot didn't just randomly decide to get work done. He had a real problem, a dead magneto. Enter Michael Stewart, an A&P mechanic who took on the job. Here's the thing. Stewart himself admitted he had limited experience with this type of magneto, it was a D-style single-drive dual magneto, not something he worked with every day. He did what he could, corrected some miswired P-leads, ran the engine, and confirmed the right side had failed. The owner then ordered a replacement magneto and had Stewart install it. Now, to be fair, Stewart didn't just slap it in and walk away. He did ground runs, and then Kevin Schumann, another mechanic at the shop, did a quality control check. But here's where it gets frustrating. That QC wasn't about meticulously checking torque values or verifying service instructions from the manufacturer. It was just making sure wires weren't dangling loose and the engine sounded okay on the ground. And here's where it gets really crazy. The engine manufacturer had actually issued a service letter warning mechanics about this exact magneto type. They literally said, hey, if you don't torque this hardware properly, or if you install the clamp wrong, or even use the wrong gasket, this thing can come loose. And once it does, you lose power, period. So did Stewart and Schumann know about that letter? Did they follow it? Clearly not. Because when investigators got to the wreck, that Magneto was sitting there, loose, wobbling in its mount, bolts backed off, able to twist by hand. It was basically a ticking time bomb. And look, I don't want to sound like I'm just throwing these guys under the bus. Small town maintenance shops deal with this all the time parts they're not familiar with, relying on the owner to supply replacements, doing their best with limited experience. But the one thing you cannot compromise on in aviation is the basics. Torque, specs, safety checks, and following the manufacturer's service instructions. Miss that, and you're gambling with lives. When investigators combed through the wreckage, they did what they always do, rule out the obvious. First question, did the pilot lose control because something snapped in the flight controls? Number the cables, rods, and surfaces were all continuous. Next, was this a fuel problem? Did he run it dry or suck in contaminated gas? Nope. The tanks had fuel, the lines were clean, and the gas collator was clear. So, no smoking gun there. And with no fire after the crash, it was pretty obvious the engine had been running, but just not making enough power. And then they got to the magneto. 
And here's where things went from tragic to downright maddening. The single drive dual magneto was still bolted to the engine. At least it looked like it, but when investigators checked closer, they found the retaining hardware was loose. Not a little bit loose. The bottom bolt was backed off nearly a quarter inch. The whole unit could literally be twisted by hand. Imagine that. The one component responsible for delivering spark to every cylinder, just wobbling around in its mount like a loose light bulb. Why does that matter? Well, ignition timing on a piston engine is critical. Spark has to fire at the exact right moment in the compression stroke. A few degrees early or late, and the engine loses efficiency, power drops, and sometimes you'll get roughness. But here's the tricky part. In this accident, witnesses described the engine as sounding smooth. And that makes sense. The magneto wasn't failing in a dramatic sputtering way. It was still firing, just firing at the wrong times. Smooth but weak. That's why the takeoff roll stretched long, why the plane couldn't climb, and why the pilot, no matter how experienced, had no way to coax more horsepower out of it. And what makes this extremely frustrating is that Lycoming, the engine manufacturer, had already seen this before. They issued a service instruction letter warning mechanics. If you don't torque these bolts, if you don't check the clamps, if you use the wrong gasket, this magneto can shake loose. And when it does, expect a power loss. It was a known hazard. The solution wasn't rocket science. It was basic maintenance discipline. Yet here we are, with an airplane in pieces and a family missing a loved one. After the report came out, pilots and mechanics lit up the forums and comment sections with their takes. And honestly, some of the discussion was brutally honest. One point that came up, the pilot only had about 10 hours in this specific Cessna 182RG over the 11 days before the accident. And yes, familiarity with a type matters. The retractable sky lane has its quirks, and flying a new-to-you plane always means a learning curve. But let's not fool ourselves. That wasn't the killer here. You can't know your plane better and magically produce extra horsepower. Missing horsepower is missing horsepower, but still people debated. Some mechanics said, look, this was preventable. Put torque seal on the hardware. It's cheap, and it tells you instantly if anything shifts. Others were harsher. That takeoff roll was obviously long. The pilot should have aborted. And here's where it gets messy, because they're both kind of right. The real tension in general aviation is this. How much responsibility rests on the mechanic, and how much falls on the pilot? The mechanic screwed up, no question. Loose bolts are inexcusable. But, and this is a tough pill to swallow, the pilot did have a chance to cut power and stop before running out of runway. Would that have guaranteed survival? Probably. But would most pilots, in the heat of the moment, with the plane just barely flying, make that call in time? Honestly, not always. Here's the bottom line. In this accident, the NTSB didn't waffle. They didn't spread the blame around. They set it straight. The cause was maintenance personnel's failure to properly torque and inspect the magneto. End of story. The pilot didn't cause this. He was caught in the fallout of a mistake he had no way to spot. And that, to me, is the really crazy part. A guy with over a thousand hours, who knew what he was doing, trusted that the professionals had done their job. And that trust is exactly what killed him. If there's one takeaway from this crash, it's this. In aviation, nothing is small. Nothing. A cotter pin missing from a control linkage? That's not just a pin. A torque value missed. On a bolt? That's not just a bolt. These are the tiny, boring details that keep the machine flying. Ignore them, and sooner or later, you pay in blood. That magneto bolt, just one piece of hardware out of thousands on that airplane, managed to undo everything else. The pilot's experience, the pre-flight inspection, the engine run-ups, even the passenger's trust in his friend, all of it unraveled because someone didn't tighten and verify. And the lesson cuts both ways. For mechanics, know your limits. If you're not confident with a component, don't just guess and hope it works. Aviation maintenance isn't a good enough business. For pilots and owners, don't blindly trust a plane 
just because the logbook says it's airworthy. After maintenance, test it. Run it hard on the ground. Fly it locally first. Be suspicious of new work, because the hangar is where most accidents are born, long before the wheels ever leave the runway. This wasn't bad luck. This wasn't inevitable. This was one missed step in the shop that left zero margin in the air, and it cost a good pilot his life.